My aim as a young player was to be able to play anything that anyone asked me to play. And at age 18, I went to work at the Majestic Hotel. And there were three superb jazz musicians. Two of them were 33. Bear in mind, I was 18, and I, I, I didn't quite believe that people could live that long. <laughs> the pianist and multi-instrumentalist sax and flute player were both world class. The drummer was a jazz drummer in London who was 38. And each of these players were stunning. As I say, two were world class, but they chose to stay in Bournemouth with their families rather than move on to the larger scene. The band leader was in his 60s and was a fan of Al Bowley, the crooner from the early 1940s. But nevertheless, these people were better for me. Now, would you like to hone in on any of this or shall I keep going? No, you keep going, brother. I think he's doing very well, don't you? Can you, oh, sorry, can you also see there are parallels with whatever life you have? Yeah. At the Majestic, it was a superb education in sight reading, playing Jolson's Fast and Slow, Foxtrot's Quick Steps, and B'mitzvahs and Weddings. I have played B'mitzvahs, and no doubt we shall return to a tale so, I'm working with people better than myself. The next is we go to our work. Our work is not coming to us. So, we go to the work, and in 1967, that was London. If you were in the music industry, you had to go to London. So, I went to London with the Giles brothers, bass player and drummer, who were both better musicians than myself, we went to London together. We moved there in the middle of 1967. I had just turned professional on my 21st birthday, and we moved to London. We had a job backing the flower pot men. They had a hit. Let's go to San Francisco. It was a hit of the time, Tim Pan Alley. So I said to mother, I'm moving to London. I packed my bags, guitar, everything necessary for the professional life in London. The Giles brothers arrived about six o'clock in the morning, Lye Road, Wimborne. We climbed into their crumbling vehicles, I believe a 1953 Ford Popular and a 1952 crumbling Daimler and set off for London. We arrived in London about 10 o'clock at Timpan Alley, Denmark Street, the Geoconda, parked the car. And then we went to meet our agent, who had got us this booking backing the flower pot men. So we went there, turned up in Soho Square, went into his office, and said they've got someone else. Oh, yes! <laughs> and he signed a cheque for five pounds for our petrol, and we went back to the Geoconda, looked in the back pages of the Melody Maker. Musicians desperate for work, so desperate they'll accept any job, however menial. Please call this number. Um, pushed our coins into this telephone box before setting off home to Wimborne, leaving London about six o'clock. I still don't understand why an agent in London who knew at least the evening before that the job had moved would not pick up a telephone and tell those young men. This was my first hand-to-hand -hand contact with the music industry. So we arrived back in Wimbledon about 10 o'clock. Hello, Mum, I'm home. Our mother did not look surprised. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of my contacts from the Bournemouth Hotel circuit, Douglas Ward, who I'd been working with at 
the Tewton Glen Hotel, the first country house hotel in England, as one of the Corps de Vox trio, Doug got us a job backing a singer, an Italian singer, at an Italian restaurant in London, La Dolce Notte, in German Street in the centre of Piccadilly. And we were a quartet, Douglas, Giles, Giles and Fripp, backing Hot Lips Moreno. <laughs> at least this is what I called him and actually how I used to introduce him. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together. Yes, it's a great expense. All the way from Italy, it's Hot Lips Moreno. <laughs> and Signor Moreno would come on and say to me, please, please, you know call me Hot Lips. <laughs> However, Douglas Ward, our band leader, a lovely gentleman, and now uh, a leading light in the Berliner Review of Cruise Ships. If you go Douglas Ward, this is what he's now doing. He will tell you the cruise ships you need to get upon. Lovely man, he was burnt up an appalling act of traffic, traffic manners at a roundabout. And he got out of his car and stopped and explained to these three rather rough-looking men how their driving habits could certainly be improved and their manners should be addressed. So they stomped on him and kicked him and left him in a heap. <laughs> I visited him in hospital a week later and Giles, Giles and Fripp turned up to back Hot Lips and Moreno as a trio. This began on the Monday and we learnt on the Wednesday that the agent was ripping us off. This is my second hand-to-hand -hand contact with the music industry within the space of about three months. So we went on strike on the Thursday, returned to work on the Friday, and were sacked on the Saturday. And went back to ignominy and poverty at 93A Brondesbury Road. Now, there is one other step that we should introduce before we actually go back to the beginning again, right. which is? When we are between work, that is, when we're unemployed because we've just been sacked from the Dolce Notte for going on strike and insulting the singer, we keep practicing. And in my period of what I refer to as unemployment, I kept practicing two, four, six, eight, ten, even twelve hours a day. When we're working, it's difficult to find the time to keep practicing, although may I say I do, but nevertheless this is the principle, keep practicing. So, beginnings are far hard to find, but nevertheless we begin where we are and we begin with a name. Point two, we go to someone who knows more than we do. Point three, we get out of bed. Point four, we practice. Point five, we work with people that are better than us. Point six, we go to our work. Point seven, we keep practicing. 